For today's lesson, we will talk about the cross contour line. Cross contour lines describe an object's surface between edges. It is different from outline and contour lines that we've been discussing before. An outline is a line of even thickness that exactly follows the outer edges of an object. Contour lines define the edges of a form and major divisions within it. Cross contour lines define the surface of a volume. With careful observation, you can draw lines across the surface of the objects, much like a topographic map. Rather than following the edges of planes, cross contour lines move from side to side across planes, describing dips and swells and surface changes, and enhancing the sense of volume and dimensionality in objects. So for this exercise, I want you to start with a thumbnail sketch in the corner. You can do this in any corner of the page, wherever you feel like is most appropriate area. Using the siding technique, uh, which is the structural lines, structural mappings, and angle measurements, quickly jot down the objects in your composition. The goal of the thumbnail sketch is to get a good composition down before you create a full-scale drawing on your paper. When you introduce symmetrical objects like the cone, try to draw the line of symmetry which is also the axis of the form. In your thumbnail, it's helpful if you identify the eye level. The eye level is where your eyes are sitting in relation to your drawing. So I'd move on to the full scale drawing. Try to use the guidelines and the structural lines that you create in the thumbnails to replicate that in bigger scale. I mark the center line vertically across the page and then place the sphere which is on the left side of that line. For drawing a circular shape, it's best if you practice drawing a perfect circle freehand style. It requires a lot of practice and a lot of warm-up exercises for you to be able to do this comfortably. So with, less, with little pressure in your hand, quickly draw a gestural circle and then identify the focal point of the circle. You can use your pencil or eyes to, to check if the edges of the radius is equal distance from the focal point all the way around the circle. Spend enough time refining the shape of the circle so that it's a perfect circle. It might help if you step back and look at it from a distance and see if any areas need adjustment. For any rectangular shapes like a cube or rectangular prism, it's helpful if you can identify if the cube is sitting in one point perspective or two point perspective. So I went ahead and drew in the eye level, that's the horizon line. So that's where your sight is in relation to your subject matter. And I have went ahead and attached a sheet of newsprint on the right side just to show you how I can elongate that horizon line all the way to the right. 
Now this rectangular prism is sitting in two-point perspective. So the two parallel lines going horizontally towards the right, they will all vanish towards a single point somewhere far away to the right. Similarly, the two left parallel lines are vanishing towards a single point all the way to the left outside of the page. So for this exercise, your perspective doesn't have to be accurate, but just make sure that these lines are vanishing towards a point. The edge of the table is vanishing towards the vanishing point in linear perspective, so I mark the vanishing point with a dot. Please note that the rectangular prism and the edge of the table are sharing completely different vanishing points. With the cone, I started with introducing the line of symmetry in, down the center, drawing one side, and then complete the other side focusing on the symmetrical component. For the cross contour of the sphere, I want the axis of the sphere to be in line with the direction of the light. For this setup, the light is coming from the left top corner. So I've drawn an arrow with the, uh, the line of symmetry or the axis of rotation to align with that direction of light. From there, I'm starting with a dot. And then just let that dot grow out into a circular shape. I'm drawing the lower half of the oval, but note that you can connect the entire oval by doing a light gesture drawing of whatever is opposite side of the visible side. Moving on from the horizontal cross contours, I'm starting to introduce the vertical cross contours which also work in similar way. Basically, I'm introducing the cross sections of the sphere, which is, which is technically a perfect circle. However, from the angle where we are sitting, they appear as ovals of different shape. So you can play with the hand pressure to emphasize the visible line and draw in whatever is not visible, whatever is on the, outs uh, on the other side of the opaque plane as light lines. These vertical cross sections are all intersecting at the point which was aligning with the line of axis. And note that the shape of the oval is getting wider and bigger the further away it is from the center line.
I move on to drawing the cross contours of the rectangular prism. Like I mentioned before, the vanishing point for the right side of that prism is very far away outside of the page. So it's important that you know approximately where it's located for you to be able to draw all of those cross contour lines correctly. It doesn't have to be exactly accurate to the point, but just note that these lines should be vanishing towards a single point, meaning that they should appear as somewhat parallel to either edges. Um, however, these lines should be going in towards each other rather than going apart from each other. With the vertical cross contour lines, they can just drop straight down, parallel and perpendicular to the edges of the paper. And remembering the focal point, which was the vanishing point for the edge of the table, you can use a ruler, redraw that edge of the table to the left, and then use that same exact vanishing point to draw all the cross contours of the table. All the cross sections of the cone is sitting above the eye level. Wherever the intersection is aligning with the eye level, you will most likely see a straight line as a cross contour. If the ovals are sitting below your eye level, you will be seeing a lot of the top portion of the cross sections. If they're sitting above your eye level, you're seeing a lot of the bottom side of the cross sections. So noting that everything here is sitting above the eye level so you can go ahead and imagine the cross sections which are very thin ovals but emphasize the top the top half of those ovals if your object were to sit below your eye level you will most likely be emphasizing the bottom half of your ovals So the table is sitting in linear perspective, which is one point perspective. We have one vanishing point, which I've marked based on the angle of the left edge of the table. You can use the same vanishing point and the ruler to complete your cross contour for the table. The horizontal cross contours of the table can just be a straight horizontal line, which are parallel to the bottom edge of the paper. The reason why cross contour exercise is very helpful is because when you go into shading, the cross contour lines help you identify the shapes of core shadows. Core shadow is an area of the form which is on the form that is not being hit by any reflected light. The reflected light is the areas that you see on the right of the cone I just erased slightly. 
Reflected light is light bouncing back into the form shadow from the surrounding. So a lot of the wall surfaces here is white wall. Light is hi hitting the white drapery and the wall and bouncing back on the edge of the form. Now what you see me drawing right now is a cast shadow. Cast shadow is shadow which is left by the object on the adjacent surface. So the sphere is casting a shadow on the surface of the table. Like I've mentioned, the shapes of these core shadows and cast shadows all follow the cross contour lines to a certain extent. So you can use the pre-drawn cross contour lines as a guide to identify the core shadow, also known as the form shadow. And you can do the same thing with the cast shadow. I'm using my kneaded eraser to erase the reflected light, which is underneath that core shadow. Not only should you be erasing, but go ahead and put a light layer of shading there so it's not completely white, but just a single tone lighter than the core shadow. The, irregular, the irregularity of the shape of the shadow from the rectangular prism is caused by the tablecloth which is underneath the forms. So this is the completed piece showing you how to draw the cross contour lines of basic geometric forms. These are spheres, cone, and rectangular prism. Now I know it's hard for you to find these objects in home settings, so I want you to find items that you can improvise with. These items could include circular, any circular forms such as fruits, which are um, which are very similar to spherical shapes. Um, you can find any household items such as the squeeze bottle and the spray bottle which do have a lot of these cylindrical and cone-like structure embedded into their form. So try your best to find these objects at home. Start with your thumbnails, make sure to identify your eye level and complete the cross contour drawing. Hope you have fun with this exercise.